Welcome again. Today we move to the second part of our topic in cryptography. We are going to speak about goals, services, and types, plus RSA as an example of public-private key crypto systems. In the previous meeting, we got familiar with the basic definitions and the historical background. Again, cryptography is the science and the study of finding information by converting the plain text into ciphertext. And this phase is called encryption and from ciphertext back to plain text. And this phase is called decryption. The primary goal of the cryptography is to secure important data on the storage devices or as it passes through a medium that may not be secure itself. Usually, this medium is a computer network. There are several services provided by cryptography, such as confidentiality, integrity, authentication, and non-repudiation. Regarding confidentiality or secrecy, ensuring that no one can read the message except the intended receiver. Data is kept secret from those without the proper credentials, even if the data travels through an insecure medium. Next service is integrity, assuring the receiver that the received message has not been altered in any way from the original. And services provided by authentication, cryptography can help establish identity for authentication purposes. The process proving one's identity, the primary forms of host to host. Authentication on the internet today are name based or address based, and both are weak. And the last service, non repudiation, a mechanism to prove that the sender really sent the message. So he cannot deny in the future that he did not send the message. There are three types of cryptography secret key cryptography, public key cryptography, hash functions. First, secret key cryptography. This type of cryptography technique uses just a single key. The sender applies a key to encrypt a message while the receiver applies the same key to decrypt the message. So the sender and the receiver, both of them has the same key. And this is one major disadvantage of this scheme that the same key is used for encryption and decryption. Since only single key is used, we say that this is a symmetric encryption. The second type is public key cryptography. This type of cryptography technique involves two key crypto system in which a secure communication can take place between receiver and sender over insecure communication channel. Since a pair of keys is applied here, so this technique is also known as asymmetric encryption. In this method, each party has a private key and a public key. The private key is secret and is not relieved, while the public key is shared with all others involved. For example, if Ali wants to send a message to Selma, then Ali will encrypt the message with Selma's public key. After receiving the message, Selma can decrypt it using her private key, which is unknown to Ali. So Ali knows only Selma's public key and Selma's private key is kept secret and is not relieved to anyone. Again, in public key cryptography, we have different keys, public and private. The third type of cryptography uses hash functions. In this algorithm, no keys are used. A fixed length hash value is computed as per the plain text that makes it impossible for the contents of the plain text to be recovered. Hash functions are also used to check the integrity of the message. 
to ensure that the message has not been altered, compromised, or affected by virus. They are also used by many operating systems to encrypt passwords. Next, RSA crypto system. The system was invented by three scholars, Ron Ravist, Adi Shamir, and Lynn Adelman, and hence it is termed as RSA crypto system. Each person or a party who desires to participate in communication using encryption needs to generate a pair of keys, namely public key and private key. Here are the steps for generating the public and the private keys. First, we select two large prime numbers, B and Q. Next, we calculate N, B multiplied by Q. For strong and breakable encryption, let N be large number, usually a minimum of 512 bits, and in modern systems, even 1024 bits and more. Next, we find the totient function, phi, which is b minus 1 multiplied by q minus 1. Next, we choose an integer e such that e is greater than 1 and less than the totient function. And the greatest common divisor of e and the totient function is 1. So e and the totient function are co-primes. Next, we calculate D such that D E mod phi equals to 1. Now, E and N form the public key. D and N form the private key. Next, the process of encryption according to RSA. Suppose the sender wish to send some text message to someone whose public key is NE. So the input is the plain text B and the public key. The sender then represents the plain text as a series of numbers less than N. Cipher text equals B to the power E mod N. The cipher text C is equal to the plain text B multiplied by itself E times and then reduced mod N. This means that C is also a number less than N. In decryption, the input is the cipher text and the private key. And the plain text is computed according to this formula C cipher text to the power D mod n. As you see here, the sender has only the public key and encrypt the message using the public key of the receiver. And the receiver can decrypt the message using his own private key. Suppose, for example, that we have, for simplicity, two small prime numbers, b7 and q13. So n equals 7 by 13, 91. The totient function is 72, which is b minus 1 multiplied by q minus 1. We can select e, for example, 5, and this is a valid choice since there is no number that is common factor of 5 and the totient function phi, except for 1. The pair of numbers 5 and 91 forms the public key and can be made available to anyone whom we wish to be able to, to send us encrypted messages. By applying B equals 7, Q13, and E5 to the extended Ecolodian algorithm, the output will be D29. We can check that D was calculated correctly by computing DE mod phi 
which is one. So the private key is 2991 and the public key is 591. As a receiver, I keep the private key secret and I can give the public key to anyone whom I want to communicate with. Suppose that the plain text B equals 10, we can get the cipher C as follows, 10 to the power 5, mod 91, which is 82. And this cipher text can be sent over the communication channel to the receiver. Now on the receiving end, we have the cipher and the private key. To retrieve the original text, the cipher is raised to the power 29, mod n, which is 91. And this value is 10, which is the message that was sent. Again, here P should be less than N. And if P is large, it should be broken into blocks. RSA is a strong crypto system since attackers cannot find in finite time the two primes B and Q used to obtain N. Private key D is calculated from B, Q, and E. For given N and E, there is unique number D. Number D is the inverse of E mod phi, the totient value. This means that D is the number less than the totient function such that when multiplied by E, it is equals to one mod phi. This relationship can be written as follows. The extended Euclidean algorithm takes B, Q, and E as input and gives D as output. Secret key algorithms require less computing power to be created than equivalent private keys in public key cryptography. RSA is used in many commercial applications with 1024 bits and more. There is another public private key crypto system called Al Jamal, which uses elliptic curve function to generate the public and private keys. And I will publish one video on Al Jamal crypto system. For today, that's all. Thank you.